Okay, guys. Okay, we. Okay, we double check after the class. All right. Just double check after. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I did not call you. All right. Isuyang. Your name is here, so it's okay. Is it okay? Okay? Alright. But anyways, if you came late, if you came late, I'll see you after the class. Alright, uh, last week, if you were not here, if you were not here last week for the quiz, so after the class you can come and get your quiz back, alright? Okay, if you do not get your quiz. All right, uh, let us start with good news. I have good news, always have good news. Uh, so, uh, this is what we're gonna do. Um, as you know, the exam period is 20, uh, 20 to the 26th, so the 25th we have the exam, right? So the good news is uh, we're gonna have uh, only four chapters for the exam. Yeah. This is what I was thinking, right? All right, but look, uh, today we're going to see chapter five. Uh, this one won't be on the exam. We won't have the time to cover the whole thing. Maybe with some chance we may do a lot of it today and go through the study guide. So go to the website, try to get all the study guides before the exam. All right, so uh, now, uh, this Wednesday, this Wednesday, I will be here, but I won't be teaching. I will be doing the review. So if you want to come before the exam to just make sure you have everything right, you can come and see me. I will be here. But if you don't come, it's okay. It means you are ready for the exam, right? Uh, but uh, if you didn't have a good score on the quiz, maybe it's, it will be good for you to come. The only thing I will be doing is answering to some questions, right? I won't be teaching any new material. And then after the exam, we'll go back to, you know, reviewing <coughs> chapter 5 uh, and uh, <coughs> 4. Okay, okay? So remember, Wednesday, Wednesday, there is no formal class on Wednesday. I'm not teaching anything new. I will just be here for people who have questions. Okay, okay? okay. Chimuni Soyo, you want to go home now? All right. That's it for the good news. Okay, guys, so <clears throat> chapter five. Uh, now, we're going, now we're going to start looking at, yes? <laughs> you like the part that says no class, right? All right. So yeah, Wednesday I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not teaching on Wednesday, but I will be here. I will be here if you have some questions. So if you want to stay home and watch TV, that's fine too. All right. Oh, Monday there is no class because it's exam week. I'm nice, right? So you have a week vacation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Right? This, this is what it is. Okay? I think Mohammed agrees and you know, agrees with me. So so technically you have a week vacation. Just remember, just remember that if you did not do well on the quiz. I will really advise you to see me on Wednesday, and Monday I'll be in my office too. All right? So you can you have a choice. You can take a week break and go to Jejudo, or you can hang around with me and have a perfect score. All right? Okay, okay. Any questions? No questions. Shall we start? Okay. All right. The chapter five, uh, chapter five, 
honestly, honestly, I uh, I don't really like uh, calling this group of people Native Americans, but often time uh, you will see people calling you know different names. But we have like uh, different tribes of uh, these people uh, in the U.S. and in Canada, right? So uh, sometimes uh, we call them the First Nation, okay? Uh, there are different names that are, that are being called. Uh, so, uh, sorry. So today we're going to look a little bit of the culture uh, and uh, and look at uh, uh, the the full part as well. Okay. So. Uh, Often time, uh, we, um, you know, when we were in high school, some of you may be in high school. For me, when I was in high school, you know, uh, we, we were taught that America was discovered by who? Anybody remembers? Who discovered America? Yeah, Christopher Columbus, right? But anyways, this is what uh, this is what we learned. Uh, but like uh, somebody told me today. Uh, how can you discover a place if people are already living there, right? I think it's a fair question because if I'm already living here, you cannot just say you discover me, right? So, so we have to give justice uh, to these people because they they were there before the uh, European came uh, uh, to to America, okay? So, um, and uh, if you remember on the first class, I told you like a lot of names that we have in North America are actually coming from uh, these uh, people, a name like Canada. At first it was like Canada, and changed to Canada. You have uh, different names, talk about the Mississippi, uh, talking about uh, different names that you will see most in Canada in the US, that are actually uh, from, uh, from, from these people. So. And um, where did they come from? We talk about the Bering Strait, okay? Uh, just like you, if you look at the map, you look at uh, Alaska, right? And you look at uh, some parts of uh, Europe, mostly like Russia. So we say, okay, they're probably coming around that place. Uh, I'll put a map here for you that I got on Google. You may not have it. Just to give you just a, just to give you just like an image talk a little bit about the history, saying that, okay, they were probably around uh, this place and, uh, uh, you know, and they move along and get into the Alaska, so could be people that let you of Alaska and things like that. And when I did my high school in Canada, we uh, mentioned them a lot, uh, you know, a lot of wars that took place. And a lot of them died, you know, they, uh, <coughs> a lot of them died for just like small diseases that they were in brought just like a simple flu and just kill like a, a great group of people there. So a lot of them now are living in what we call reserves, just like a, a territory where they live there. And at this time, they do not have the best health uh, possible. So we trying to, you know, remember their culture and try to preserve uh, their culture, try to look at what they used to eat and what are the food that European uh, uh, brought. So it's not always uh, not always very 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 clear. But what can we remember here? We say okay, the European introduced horses, firearms, make knives, <coughs> some diseases, and a lot of them uh, die. All uh, nations, right? Uh, die, and sometimes we are like the small conflicts there. Uh, by the late 19th century, most of them, like I said, now live uh, in uh, in reserves now. Okay, so. <coughs> Uh, just like the general picture of the family, uh, where family values are really, really important, like most culture, as you may uh, imagine. Here we put here a woman in charge of domestic matters. Not really a big surprise. I think most uh, culture, uh, we may encounter things uh, like that. But something very, very interesting though, something very, very interesting is that men and women are equal. Okay, men and women are equal. So, just like a general uh, view, if you remember, uh, on uh, when we study on um, biomedicine and traditional medicine, 
we look at different people and their relationship with health. Relationship with health. So what did we say? For these people, uh, the relationship with health is associated with nature. <coughs> okay? The, the traditional health and practices is associated with nature. All right? Uh, something um, important to remember. And we mentioned in that chapter, we talk about the supernatural, uh, the, spirit, the spiritual part as well that is uh, associated uh, with the belief system. Very interesting enough, uh, especially in Canada that I know a little bit uh, better, uh, today a lot of scientists are going back to the First Nations uh, and using plants or natural products or, or medicine used by these people to actually investigate and just see if it works. And a lot of them, uh, a lot of these uh, plants are actually working. So uh, the medicine, today, the research that we are doing today uh, is also based on the First Nation you know, health uh, system, right? So a lot, of, a lot of these things are actually working. Even for us, uh, we do some research here at the university on uh, obesity and uh, diabetes. And what we do is we use uh, natural products from plants. And you will see that in the medicine, this is what uh, they, mostly, uh, they mostly use. All right? So uh, let's look at the traditional health and belief. Uh, we just go a little bit uh, faster on that one, just like a general understanding. Uh, why are they, what is the understanding of why people are sick? Well, we look at it a little bit in the first chapter. The reason may be uh, simply animal lightning, and in some cases, uh, uh, improper performance during a ceremony, you know, the ritual things that are actually taking place. But today, uh, we will look at it a little bit later. Uh, this population, a lot of people are actually suffering uh, today uh, for different reasons, you know, mostly uh, from about depression, alcoholism, and we may ask the question why, uh, what, is, what is going on, right? So today, we do more and more research, try to understand what are the health problems of this community and uh, how can, uh, can we help, okay? So, uh, talking about the food, uh, talking about the food habits, um, you know, these guys before, they were mostly, you know, hunters. Right? They were mostly hunters before, and then things change uh, over time. But the staple food for these uh, uh, native people uh, are corn, beans, and squash. This was like most of the food that uh, they, used to, uh, they used to eat. Here, uh, these are the foods introduced by uh, Europeans when they came. Right? And uh, remember, uh, since we study food and culture, uh, we often, we introduce the term that we call dietary acculturation, remember? Uh, so acculturation is what is adaptation, right? Uh, your culture is changing over time. And we look at the, the four aspects of acculturation, talk about, you know, about integration. Now, it's actually very funny because a lot of people are talking about, uh, oh, these people are not fully assimilated, right? Remember what assimilation means. Assimilation means basically you forget about your culture and you are adopting the culture of the host country, right? Everybody remembers that, right? So what do you think? Should we ask them to assimilate, right? So it's a very uh, interesting question. In contrary, uh, when we have two cultures, uh, you know, we have to think about integration, not assimilation. Because assimilation means we remove your culture, basically. <coughs> right? We remove your culture. So we should not ask these people to assimilate. We should ask them to be part of the greater society. Like uh, what was done with the Aborigines uh, in Australia. All right? So this is actually very, very important that people keep their culture, they keep their values, they keep their belief system, uh, they keep the, their food habits, and then we try to understand, you know, uh, how do they live, 
why do they do things that they do? Okay. <coughs> so, uh, I put here on the PPT, uh, the European Union introduced different foods such as apples, carrots, turnips, wheat, and of course, uh, hard uh, that was also um, introduced. Okay. Now, uh, generally speaking, uh, remember it's not, it's not, it's not uniform, <coughs> but just take like uh, generally speaking, we say okay, talking about the dietary habit that is changing. Uh, we say okay, one to two meals, uh, one to two meals uh, per day, and uh, often time people have to eat uh, in silence. But I think uh, some other uh, cultures, also in Asia, I think uh, some people do that as well when they eat. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a silent moment. Okay, the food is actually uh, simply prepared. But the point I want to want you to look at here is what do I put here? Uh, sweet was limited to fruits, so meaning like we have natural sugar from fruit. All right. Uh, we have honey, uh, maple syrup, actually uh, very, very popular uh, uh, in Canada. So we look at this, and then we look at uh, the change over time. All right? What, what change is taking place right now? So we put here traditional foods have been lost and substitutions made for beef and fried bread. When we talk, when we talk about substitution, we refer to what? We're talking about now dietary acculturation. Because now we have two cultures together, right? We have the European culture, and then we have the native people culture. Something that again. So we see, now they have to leave the food that they used to eat, right? To now start to eat different food introduced by the European. What did I tell you? If you remember, um, I told you that everything that we do, the end result for us studying the Department of Nutrition, the end result is what? Is health. If I make the change, if I make the change, is the change, is the change good for my health? Right? So we will look at it because today now, what do we realize? We just realize, oh, okay. They, don't be, they may not have the best health possible. Is the change good for them or not? Okay? We can change our dietary habit. This is what the question we always ask. Remember, we say, okay, oh, immigrants are coming to America, immigrants are coming to Korea, and after a time, it seems like their health is going down. And we ask the question, why? Okay? We ask the question, why? So, dietary acculturation, is it beneficial for them? Then we ask, is it good or is it not good? Because today, something that is very important, right? Uh, now, the, the number one, right? Number one reason, you know, number one reason, uh, or the, the number one cause, of these people dying is what, right? Is actually heart disease. Okay, so these people are mostly dying of heart disease. And what did we study a couple of weeks ago? If you remember, you will see on the next slides. Uh, don't worry, don't worry so much. They're mostly dying of heart disease. And we just realized that their level, if you compare it to the general population, the le level of diabetes is actually much higher than the general population. I think around like 20%. Okay? I'll show that to you on the, uh, on, the, on, on the other slides here. I put here, diseases today are associated with overconsumption. And uh, hey guys, and I hope, uh, and I hope uh, you guys, uh, I hope you guys remember, you guys remember. I hope you remember what we talk about, and this part is actually very important. We talk about overconsumption, meaning like too much energy, right? 
The consequence of too much energy is what is we likely going to accumulate more fat. We likely going to be a little bit more obese than everybody else. So, and uh, we also realize that these guys compare compare to the other population, the rest of the population. Their social economical status is actually a little bit lower. Do you, do you guys remember the relationship between social economical status and health? I hope you do. So we have social economical status here. What do we mean? By social economical status, we're talking about what? We're talking about income, we're talking about education. Okay, okay? So by the end result, we want to see what is the relationship what is the relationship between socioeconomic status and my health, right? So we look at these people as well. So the end result here, the end result here is my health, all right? And when I talk about health here, remember we talk about overconsumption. And we had that picture of, uh, we have a picture here. We take the case, the case of obesity, relationship between obesity and non communicable disease. Everybody must have that picture by now, right? So, what do we have here? We have some cancer, all right? Here, what did we say? We have hypertension, okay? Uh, here we have what? Atherosclerosis. You know, we having now uh, excess of fat. Uh, you know, we having on your arteries, you having like a uh, plague there, and we and this and this problem, this atherosclerosis is associated with what? With heart disease, stroke, stroke. Heart disease. Remember, uh, for those of you who took the nutrition class, you must remember we now having like your artery, the fat is deposited there, so the blood is not flowing well. All right. So I, what, do I, what do I put here? I put stroke. I put heart disease. Okay, okay. So and uh, here, what we have here, we have what? Diabetes, right? And uh, diabetes here, we're talking about insulin resistance that are associated with fat. You know, in nutrition class, you must know it by now. The sugar is not able to go to the cell because it's actually blocked uh, by the, the presence of fat there. All right? So the insulin cannot do its job. Insulin cannot work properly. Why insulin is not working properly? Exactly. Right? So, and so when you give a good illustration, it's like, you have a, it's like you have a key and you put some gum on it and then it will be difficult to open it, all right? So have that picture, have that picture in mind, right? So obesity is associated with this and high blood pressure, remember, uh, if you read one of my articles, uh, I know you didn't read it, uh, relationship between high blood pressure, right, and uh, body mass index. Obesity, and we realize that a lot of people who also have a problem with blood pressure seem to also have a problem related to heart attack, also associated with obesity. All right, and atherosclerosis too, because we have some plague, some fat on the arteries, also associated with this high blood pressure as well. Okay, and people who have diabetes, what do we say? 90% of the people with type 2 diabetes, they seems to be obese. So there's also a relationship here with high blood pressure and consequently with stroke and heart attack. So now we ask the question, first nation, the, the native people, what is going on? Oh, number one reason they die, they die of what? Of heart attack. And then we ask the question, okay, what happened with heart attack? Oh, okay, it seems to be like, oh, obesity is actually 
higher than the normal population. I mean, not normal population, the rest of the population. All right? Uh, the presence of type 2 diabetes is actually a little bit higher. Cardiovascular disease are actually more prominent. So you see that what we study in chapter 1, uh, and what we're looking at today, everything is related. Don't just study chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 for the exam. Okay, okay? Now, this is your health. If you say, okay, I'm having heart disease, we ask, what is the reason? Is it associated with obesity? <coughs> and obesity will be associated with what? With my food habit, my food culture. So now let's come back. Social economical status. Okay, I don't have a lot of money. And what did we say? We say that, okay, depending on where you are, that usually poor people seems to be a little bit obese in North America. We say, okay, what will be the reason? They will be eating cheap food, rich in what? Calorie. Okay, okay? So try to always have this picture. So now, social economical status is associated with what? Food and security. Remember that picture, all right, guys? Food security, everybody still remembers the definition. Food security. Uh huh. Okay, one more. Three elements of food security, what do we have? Sufficient, nutritious, and safe. If you have two on the exam, is zero. All right? So, so, and food and security is what? Pande, opposite. All right? I'm not having enough nutritious and safe food all the time. You may have food every day, but if that food is making you sick because of food habits, then you cannot say that you are food secure because the food that you eat is affecting your health. So you are not food secure. Okay, okay? So we talk about social economical status with food and security, and food and security will affect your health. Right? Now, food, uh, social economical status is also associated with what? It also associated with your dietary habit, food habit. Okay? What is your food habit? How do you eat every day? Do you have a breakfast? What kind of breakfast do you have? What kind of food do you eat? Am I eating food? Am I eating a lot of vegetables? Or am I eating like mostly food rich? You know, in calories. And remember the food pyramid, we look at the food pyramid, what is on top is the food we must eat the least. Okay guys? So we have to reduce the fat, we have to reduce the sugar. Remember, if you look at the first slide, the previous slide, previous slide, they were having sugar, the natural sugar from what? From the fruit. But now they're having like added sugar, other type of food. Right? They mostly eat it from the top of the pyramid. Okay, okay. So now your food habit, how you eat every day, is going to affect what? Your health. Right? That we know. And we also know that social economical status is also going to be associated with your health. All right? In Korea, we uh, investigated, the article is not published yet, we investigated the social economical status of young Korean children, relationship with uh, dental caring. <coughs> All right? So this picture, guys, relationship between social economical status and health is a picture that you need to have right now. And this picture is associated with what? When you talk about health, it's also associated with obesity. All right? Because we know that obesity is associated with non-communicable diseases. Okay, okay? Chimuni soyo. Everybody's good? Good, good. All right. So, so this is what we have here. 
Uh, this is what I put here, socioeconomical status, right, contribute to inadequate diet. All right? And number two, uh, I put here, they, are, they often term lactose uh, intolerant. Uh, lactose intolerant, only for nutrition students. Everybody remembers what it is, what does it mean to be lactose intolerant? Anybody? Lactose intolerance? Yeah, what, what's up with that? No. <laughs> lactose intolerance. What does it mean? Everybody sleeping? Yeah, so here, you don't have uh, that enzyme, the lactose, to be able to break you know, the sugar from the milk. All right? So it's what we call lactose intolerance. But in the nutrition class, we see the difference between lactose intolerance and uh, milk allergy. Similar, but it's not the same thing. Okay, okay. All right. All right. So, so then, remember again the picture. We're talking about social economical status and food habits. Let's look at the food habit here. We give the example of the Alaska net, uh, native here. Now they're having a diet that is high in refined carbohydrates. We talk about the carbohydrates here, we're talking about different sugars, right? That's rich in carbohydrates and fat. Okay? Do you see the you see the big change? <coughs> Number two, protein intake kind of a decline. Alright? Protein intake is decline. Low in fruits and vegetables, really opposite to what they used to be eating before. All right? So not a big surprise if you see their health come over, going down a little bit. So which means that we have to make some adjustment in order to have the whole population uh, in, a, in the same uh, level. Traditional diet replaced by processed processed food. And for some of you who took a nutrition class with me, we talk about these uh, processed food as well, right? We talk, even when uh, first nutrition class, talking about uh, refined food, refined grains, and uh, so some of those these foods that are refined are not always uh, the best for us. And we can even see that uh, level of salt is probably going high and it's not the best that uh, we can uh, we can have all right uh, now uh, another observation this is just a, a general information it's not something that uh, you have to really uh, memorize just a general information to know uh, the life expectancy is now 2.4 years less than the average uh, American so meaning that uh, they die a little bit you know, earlier than the other people. So it's something that uh, we have to also look at. Uh, they also died the high rates of what? Tuberculosis, alcoholism, uh, motor vehicle accident, uh, diabetes, uh, unintentional injuries, and uh, suicide. You know, suicide, suicide was a big thing in Korea a couple of years ago. It's actually uh, going down now. Uh, but we can always ask the question, okay, why our police level is actually pretty high. It's not, the relationship is not very far for problems uh, such as uh, suicide. All right? Okay, uh, the nutritional status, uh, we talk uh, a little bit uh, uh, about it, but, you know, general thing to, on the, uh, to know uh, is uh, uh, breastfeeding is actually important for them, which is good. Uh, if you took a dietary and life uh, management class with me, we spent uh, almost the whole semester talking about um, you know, what people should eat from uh, the mother, uh, expecting the expecting, uh, expecting mother to the adult, right? We look at the life cycle. And what we say is, you know, minimum six months of uh, breastfeeding, this is what is required. So we give them kudos for that because I think uh, they really uh, follow it uh, pretty well, part of the um, part of the, the, the culture. However, something that is very sad is the postnatal mortality rate is actually 60% higher. Right, 60% higher. Okay. 
So uh, I mentioned the problem of obesity. Uh, we just go over it and uh, spend a couple of times uh, on this one. 20% uh, when I started when we start talking about it, when did I say 20% above national average? Uh, no, which is a problem, right? If uh, most people are obese, then uh, we understand that we, do not, we won't be surprised to have uh, all of the disease. Okay? Heavier body weight is preferred. Remember, we spoke about it in, uh, in chapter one, that depending, depending on, on the culture, some culture actually prefer to look a little bit heavier, right? But the question we must ask is, uh, do we have any consequences with our health? Okay. All right. So uh, these are just uh, some questions that I have there uh, for you guys to think about it, if you want to. Uh, we we ask, uh, uh, why do we have why do we have increase in diabetes? Why did that why diabetes seems to be, you know, higher? in that population. Question number two, uh, do we have genetic predisposition? Uh, talking about the insulin, uh, uh, insulin uh, resistance. It's also possible, right? These are the questions that we have here. Uh, is the problem, is the problem because we don't have traditional foods anymore? I think these questions are not very far uh, from Korea, because Korea is go, you know, has been going through dietary transition as well. As you know, Korea, over 50 years ago, people were eating mostly vegetables and grains, right? But now we, we change, we keep on changing. And as we change, uh, the number one killer, what is the number one killer in Korea? Do you guys remember? What is the reason people will die in Korea? Number one reason? Cancer and what? Huh? Car accident? Car accident is it number two? What are the number one reasons people die? Uh, number one reason people die in Korea? Yeah, cancer is pretty hard. High too, but they also have a lot of people dying of heart disease, right? So, which is not very far, which is not very far for the same numbers we have in the U.S. So we can say in Korea, if we are going to die transition because we. Uh, you know, we eat more and more like in the West, so we won't be surprised to have the same disease that people have in the West, because food habit is the same. Okay, okay? All right, so uh, we have having less protein change in type of carbohydrates. Here we're having more refined, uh, refined one and increasing, uh, increasing fats, all right? So, <coughs> I put in red, I put in red uh, what I think is important for you guys uh, to remember. Okay? Uh, about the native people. Heart disease are not a leading cause of death. Okay? And what did we say? If you go back here, what did I say here? We talk about obesity. Look at here. Don't just uh, study to remember something. Try to put the dots together. We talk about obesity. We say obesity is 20% above national average, okay? Obesity is 20% above national average. First element. Now, number two, what do we know? We know by this picture that obesity is associated with heart disease, all right? So, then we are not too surprised to see that heart disease is now the leading cause of death among uh, this group of people. Number two, diabetes rates are two to four times higher than for the general population, and the death rate from complications is higher too. So if you look, we see the same elements here that are associated with obesity. We look at heart disease, we look at diabetes. They are all correlated, all right? So we are not just suppressed. So, so the same adjustment, the same change, the same change that we make in the general population is the same that we have to make with uh, uh, the First Nations, all right?
just try to see that we reduce uh, uh, the death rate uh, in this population. Okay, uh, alcoholism, uh, you know, there are different reasons associated with uh, alcoholism, but I won't be going uh, really into it. I haven't also read a lot of material on it, but there are, you know, many things associated with it. You know. Sometimes uh, uh, people will get into alcohol for different reasons, you know, anxiety, uh, depression, that may be associated with uh, the environment in which you live. And we also see that, like a lot of foreigners sometimes, you know, live in a country at one point of time, uh, alcohol become uh, their friend. So, and there are different reasons associated uh, to it. People may think, okay, uh, the high unemployment rates. If we talk about unemployment rates, we're talking about what? Social and economical status, less income, right? Less income basically means your dietary habit is going to be pretty poor. And if your dietary habit is poor, your health is going to be affected as well. All right? So uh, loss of ethnic identity, uh, we look at the question of identity in uh, chapter 2 a little bit. Uh, loss of self-esteem, one of the reasons also people kind of uh, get into alcohol or sometimes kill themselves when they lose uh, their, their self-esteem. So um, in Canada today there's a lot of big research going on and the government is really working very hard uh, trying to really balance things and really help uh, help these people. So really a good job that I've been doing uh, these past years. All right, so I'm going to stop here. This is just like a general picture about uh, aspect process and uh, things like that. All right, so uh, we're going to stop here for this one. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I, will, uh, you know, we'll, uh, I will give you like a, a study guide. Uh, like I said, uh, this Wednesday, I'm not going to be here.